steel, polymer, gas, ballistics, lead, brass, blood, death, torch. Done. What's new with the gun? In Europe, the bloodiest battle of this war for the eastern city of Baghdad. In parts abroad, in America, bullets fly, deputy ambush. Second M is not absolute. We will never rid the world of these loud, brutish killing machines. They're in our cities, our countryside, our media, our hands. Until we cure the human condition, our predilections towards mayhem and war, control and subjugation, the gun is not going anywhere. And that's all right with me. I wouldn't have it any other way. You know why? Because guns are fucking fun. They empower, they equalize, and sure, you can kill with them, but lethal application ought to be deployed in a defensive manner. Wink, wink. Firearms in America keep safe as much, perhaps more as they cause ruin. Dear viewer, what can the gun do for you? This video is brought to you by Kerr Ammo. If you appreciate this video and need more reasonably priced Kablamo feel, hit up Kerr Ammo. Use code ATARSHIPS at checkout to get free shipping on orders $200 and above. Can't afford it? Whatever you order, tell those good old boys at Kerr Ammo Atar sent you. Debate on the Second Amendment and gun control has not evolved for over a decade. On either side, the rhetoric resorts to the anecdotal, the platitudinous, and the tired, with sound bites filled with childish binary moral assignments like the bad guy with the gun and the good guy with the gun. Who these good or bad guys are is not yet definitive. The Second Amendment crowd beats on their shields as gun control legislation at the state level has expanded under the current administration, and the ATF reliably and unlawfully overregulates with categorical decree. The gun grabbies admonish the powers that be as there's increased sale and ownership of assault-style weapons, an increasing number of illegally obtained firearms in inner cities. And this. And wouldn't you know it, the anarchists, uber lol cows, and pesadists still can't buy grenade launchers or ICBMs off Amazon. That's not what I want. That's not what they got. That isn't what we want. The gun as a motif is inseparable from the annals of American history, from the Revolutionary War to the Battle of Blair Mountain, from JFK's assassination to Columbine. If America's DNA is that of a pioneering representative democracy and boundless innovation brought about by commercial leaps and technological bounds, then its epigenome is comprised of steel, brass, and lead. To dismiss the Second Amendment as an old relic of the nation's infancy, to instantiate the words well-regulated militia as prefatory to the people, as a way to achieve Cheapen its scope or power, to act as if our problems today can be partially solved by delegating an individual's means of defense to an emboldened government is a contradiction to the historical veridity, the surrounding culture, and the spirit of the founding documents of our enterprise. Left and far left leaning anti gun activists ought to understand that the history of leftism, of successful revolution, economic and social progress, of the labor and civil rights fought for, were hard won through peaceful protest and, in many cases, by the blast of gats and the spilled blood of exploitative monopolists, or at least their lackeys, I don't know. Conservatives and Republicans, in support of sensible gun control and other bipartisan marketing pamphlets, seem to argue from an older kind of conservatism, one closer to the illiberal red ropes of a loyalist or the intrigues of hereditarians, an elite brand they don't mind wearing as they sloganeer different ways to say limited government to the plebs. Politics be damned. Aren't we beyond all this shit already? I mean, one might think we're out the woodwork now. I mean, we've matured as a species. We've entered the future. We'd be better off without high-powered weaponry. But fam, look around. We ain't changed a bit. If you ask freedom-loving, rapidly individualistic, red-blooded Americans why the hell they need 30-plus rounds in the magazines of their assault rifle 15s, most might tell you it's their right, naturally and or constitutionally. If you inquire further, they might respond with an ominous echoing of something like watering the trees of liberty or gesture towards domestic hate groups that might one day foment terror to achieve their ends. Well, not the, yeah, well, yeah, sure, but the Nazis too, and that's what I'm, yeah. At any rate, their positions remain valid. You can badger them with anecdotes gun crime statistics, save the children pickets, or other well-crafted talking points. However, in all likelihood, they as people have nothing to do with the contents of your talking points. I mean, just how could they, unless they too are mass shooters, murderers, criminals, bad boys with guns. Advocacy for gun control is not just arbitrary restriction of firearms and the number of their keepers. It is arguably nearer to the ever-encroaching violations of civil liberties than it is to achieving any of its initial desired outcomes. Advocacy for gun control is the assumption 
presumption of guilt upon the citizenry, the whisper of freedoms decimated, the infractions of outlaws, of whom are few, the violence of stochastic terrorists, of whom there are fewer, and the suicidality of depressed men ought not to be the justification for restrictions on the millions who don't match the description. Incremental legislation are the federal government's power tools with which to chisel the stone of the citizens of a free nation into the reliefs of subjects of the state. It's in the name, control. You can add the word sensible to the marketing lingo, but only bugs are buying that shit. It's not a matter of assault weapons or a pistol brace or high capacity magazines. It's the capitulation of the people bit by bit, further drafting the terms of their surrender with the acknowledgement of their inability to govern themselves. It's another time card punched within the federal panopticon's maniacal watch. The all-seeing eye's assumption that the polity cannot be trusted with the means for defense, lethality, and empowerment. To trade for a meaningless affirmation of security, to defer to an authority indifferent to the polity and, and unimpressed by the power of individuals is not really American. To let managerial liars, professional politicians, use the tragedies suffered by the few to implicate the many in a crime unspecified. Well, that's becoming more American by the day. The threat of mass murder, devious insurrection by gangbangers, and despotism of an unruly, barbarous public, or militias of skinny zoomers high on the new meth, or any terrible end result the war game chamber of the Pentagon have already thought of, is thus attributed to every individual American, regardless of their background, their ownership of firearms, or their propensity to violence and crime. Looking at the debate with this lens ought to challenge the opinions of gun control advocates. Of course, it doesn't, because this kind of perspective doesn't matter to the grabbies. Gun control champions have valid reasons behind their beliefs. They would rather no soul succumb to needless gun violence. They don't want their children, their families, their neighbors to be the victims of an active shooter in the institutions they believe to be safe. They want to limit the damage and casualties of guns when deployed by bad actors who mean others harm. This is all well and good, yet the prerequisites to achieve these goals, or to even approximate them, fall short of effective at almost every juncture. The policies are rooted in reaction. The arguments repeated are simply used as ammunition to politically wound a principled opposition. Speaking of ammunition. See, guns by themselves are ineffective without ammunition. It's the gasoline that powers our rifles. And if you're like me, you go through a lot of diesel. So fill up your tank at curammo.com. <laughs> Top off your freedom engines at their online shop where sales are always blinging. Kerr Ammo is my go-to vendor for all my ammo needs. They've got a great reputation, rapid shipping, and a wide variety of ammo types that ought to appeal to the needs of any freedom-loving Americans. Check out the link in the description and remember to use Atar Ships at checkout. What the grabbies often neglect is speaking directly to the aspects of gun culture, the fetishization of the gun, and the economic boiling points in America that contribute directly to the negative outcomes of the gun's ubiquity. You can't jump straight into legislation, firebrand regulation, without appraisal of the preconditions of gun violence. In order to change the collective consciousness in your favor, addressing the roots of the problem is a must, a task which cannot be done from a guard tower above. What do I mean by that? You can't bend that moral art by protest or political Political action alone. You must route the gnarly edges of the gun's culture and confront brutal truths before you make pliable the arc. If you want to curb homicides, gang violence, mass shootings, suicides, work within the conditions of the villainy you perceive. Change the culture there. Heal the economic disparities within, the perverse ideologies or the nihilistic attitudes that pervade it. You can't just blame the gun for all the problems it stars in. It's like saying we need to stop skin cancer by blotting out the sun. It's like saying we need to end global hunger by by claiming the lack of food is caused by the overconsumption by morbidly obese people. It's like blaming birth defects and genetic illnesses on copulation and pregnancy. Excusing these false analogies, it's a point easily understood but readily ignored. To tackle a multivariant problem space with such low resolution as ban the gun does little in the way of actual work, and the policies proposed by gun control activists are frankly insufficient. You can be lazy and say, sensible gun control, like yada yada, is a good necessary first step. But I would remind you of the wasted time and resources past trailblazers and warn you that even if all the shit was passed and codified to your liking, problems sought to be resolved will undoubtedly worsen, irrespective of gun control and the consequences of its laws. 
The strongest or the most contentious arguments for the Second Amendment focus on shared principles, historically held and practiced today by the majority of the population. Freedom, the negative liberties of diminution of state authorities, those that tax you, can detain you, might kill you, and would bother your livelihood if you trounced upon them. And the positive liberties of not being made a violated dead bitch by your government or by a would-be attacker. Let's gather the most powerful of these arguments for a moment. Self-defense. Formulated in the Declaration of Independence, natural rights are self-evident, endowed with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. With a right to life, the obvious corollary is the power to defend one's life. The Second Amendment among the Bill of Rights is one of many rights of the individual in relation to the state. Hunting. The Second Amendment is essentially a license to hunt down and kill government employees, provided they've become tyrannical and are infringing upon the rights of Americans broadly. Defense. The people are synonymous with the militia, which honestly doesn't make sense to me how one would arrive there, but I'm no lawyer. There's the notion of foreign adversaries invading the homeland, but there's no need to delve into that contingency. Without the Second Amendment, the other amendments are symbolic and otherwise useless. If we hold in our minds that the conclusions drawn by gun control advocates are all true, then the debate is moot, and everything I've laid out prior to the summary of the Second Amendment arguments still stands. And if you don't believe me, you can rewind and check it out for yourself. Here's the rub, though. If we do the same for the Second Amendment and its advocates, it begs the question, what if all the popular arguments for the Second Amendment are true at the same time? Where does the debate even go from here? And is it at all worth engaging it? I'll leave that for the comment section to meet out. If you believe America should sequester its unique place in the world to model itself after a more European way with regard to gun control, or perhaps to even go further and, and resemble that of a security state, oppressive and illiberal, then perhaps you'd enjoy living elsewhere. Or you can try and fate this wonderful experiment that is the American project and dissolve it into a facsimile of another nation's will. But those unthinkable things worn to you by those who respect you enough to check your logic, you know, those unthinkable things strong, authoritarian, unilaterally possessed governments are wont to do after disarming the public. You can't vote your way out from the dissident wall opposed the firing line. You can't demonstrate the liberties you take for granted within a self-serving system of totalizing control. Go ahead, organize a demonstration. Leave nasty voicemails on your senator's call line. Use your vote. Lobby your representatives. Donate away. Will the world in accordance with your ideals. Demand that we be rid of guns and their culture. Those that oppose you might claim you're less of an American for doing so. But the consequences of these idyllic desires and the political actions taken to approximate them may rid the world of America too.